We have very precise DNA sequencing tools. We can get down to values that were unimaginable even five or six years ago in terms of early detection states. Personalized medicine and cancer care is what we're talking about in this episode of Tomorrow's Cure, a podcast from Mayo Clinic that brings the future of medicine to the present. I'm Kathy Worser. Thanks for being with us. Joining us from Mayo Clinic is Dr. Miranal Patnayak. He's a hematologist by training who runs the Epigenomics Development Laboratory, which is part of Mayo Clinic's Center for Individualized Medicine. It's good to see you, doctor. Good morning. Thank you, Kathy. And also with us is Dr. Kelly Bolton. She is a clinician researcher at Washington University School of Medicine in St. Louis, Missouri. Dr. Bolton, it's a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. I think personalized medicine is really interesting. And I understand that it's medicine that uses information about a person's own genes to prevent and diagnose and then treat disease. When it comes to cancer care, though, Dr. Patnayak, what does personalized medicine really mean? Yeah, Kathy, that's a great question. You know, the advent of genomic sequencing has completely changed the way we approach cancer care. Now, with precision medicine, using DNA sequencing predominantly and other related techniques, you know, we have identified certain genes that are frequently mutated in cancer types, and we have therapies that match this. So, for example, if there is a a mutation that can be found Uh, We may have a drug that's either an oral drug or an antibody that could uh, neutralize it. And so that is considered precision medicine. Now, when you take it to the next level and you have an individual patient that comes to you, and now you're able to do DNA sequencing, understanding their hereditary status, uniquely profiling their tumor status, and now prescribing therapies based on that information, that is called personalized medicine. How do you envision personalized cancer treatment being part of tomorrow's cure? What's on the next frontier here? What are you excited about? It would be my dream that if a patient comes into our clinic using artificial intelligence or large language learning, we could input you know, their entire data, their precision genome, and come up with a, you know, a poly score that factors in what their hereditary genetics were, what their genetics in the you know blood space or in the tumor space, what is their diet, what is their microbiome, what is their exposures, the level of inflammation. And if we could model that and say, look, you're 40 years old, here's where you stand, here are your risks, here's what you can do to cut it down, here's what we can do to abrogate it. I think that would fit you know, in a very composite and holistic care model that I hope we can provide. Do you ever encounter patients who just simply do not want this kind of information? And how do you deal with that, Dr. Bolton? Where it comes up is I, I see patients that have inherited predisposition to cancer, and you know they're reluctant to get tested because, like you were kind of saying, you know there's the fear of um, the anxiety that that could cause by knowing. Um, but I try to, I I say there's there's like several really good reasons to know. Um, number one, we would offer early screening interventions, and we know from from big studies um, that that it saves lives by doing that. It it reduces the um, the intensity of treatment that you would need if you got cancer. So it really does make a lot of sense in that way, and there's really good evidence supporting it. Um, the second reason is it's not just for you; it's for your family. Um, so, you know, it's for your children, it's for your distant family members so that they can also have the opportunity to, um, to know if they're at risk and whether they, they need testing and screening. Um, and then, you know, the, there, sure, there is going to be some, um, you know, anxiety about knowing that you have, um, you know, a genetic predisposition to cancer, um, but there's, um, you know, I reassure people that the conversation isn't just going to end when they're told they have a diagnosis. You know, it's going to be an ongoing relationship and care um, that'll, you know, take care over a big period of their lives, which is great. We, we as a society, kind of tamed heart disease 
uh, through helping smokers quit, better medical management of high cholesterol, high blood pressure. Is there something about cancer that makes it a tougher foe when it comes to prevention? That's exactly what cancer does. It's so, you know, in layman's terms, it, it's a very, it's an intellectual, intelligent, living being that is constantly adapting to any threat that we put at it. You know, you try and come at it with certain treatment, you try and come at it with radiation or surgery or chemotherapy, and it's constantly trying to evade, you know, what we're doing. And it's uh, acquiring resistance, it's acquiring different methods of evasion. Uh, so it's it's a constant challenge. But the idea of, like, trying to maybe treat prevent cancer, like to treat it at its earliest stages, at that phase, it doesn't like have as many tricks up its sleeve, basically, to like evade or prevent, you know, you from treating it. So there's a lot of promise there. You can watch the full version of this conversation at tomorrowscure.com.